Um, a di- with a good director, really, <laughs> and a good writer. Um, it's, you know, I think that it's one of the things, I, acting sometimes polarizes into two different things you can do with it. One is that it's, it's a, a mask where you can pretend to be the things you want to be. It's you, you go in the direction of your fantasy. It sometimes can be where you go to your worst fears and, and bear yourself at your most vulnerable and weakest and at your least appealing. But this was definitely the fantasy side of things. You know, somebody had written a role, dressed me up in the suit, give me the dialogue to, to, to do, and a, a brilliant team of stunt guys, basically all there just to make me look good. Yeah, I think um, Roxy is obviously the odd one out because she's at the start one of the only girls um, and therefore immediately discriminated against and although she comes from the same social background as a lot of the other guys, she's ultimately the weaker candidate because Kingsman is still quite an old-fashioned institute. Um, And then Eggsy turns up, who she sees is kind of... De- well, definitely not what she'd expect Kings or the others would expect Kingsman material to be. And through their apparent weaknesses, even though they don't see it as weakness, they form an allegiance together. And and yeah, and, and ultimately they just don't they don't like the other candidates, and um, they they support each other through that, and they're there for each other. Slowly falling in love. Slowly from us, that's, that's no, the I, third one. <laughs> Are you bringing that up a lot, Terry? No, I actually think, I think, I, I think one of the lovely things about it is the fact that it is, it is plutonic and they're, and they're mates and Exy doesn't just mm. see her as someone gorgeous, you know, or it, it just recognises that she has integrity and that she's a lovely person and that she's fierce and strong and able and capable. And they kind of both just bond over the fact that they're not... Kind of unpleasant, needlessly unpleasant, really. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think he's kind of, you know, um, feels a bit sort of lost, is a bit sort of disenfranchised, and Harry, this kind of enigmatic um, kind of hero figure, shows up and probably in some way, particularly with the connection with his father, neatly steps into that absent dad role. And um, offers him this opportunity to, to do something constructive with his life. You know, he's a very, very um, capable young man. You know, he's said to have above average IQ. Um, and, you know, he's got all these kind of natural physical skills. And this is the sort of perfect outlet for them. He knows a lot about him. He knew his father. And um, there's a, a, an emotional involvement because his father died heroically, um, uh, uh, saving Harry's life, and uh, it was due to a mistake that Harry made. So there's a, an immense um, emotional investment in that, and so I think he, he sees him as having to take on something of the father responsibility, but he also has been watching this boy grow up from a distance, and he sees this enormous talent and enormous potential. Uh, and he also sees him uh, going down a path, as he says, uh, which is going to end badly. And I think he sees a very, very troubled boy with a troubled family, and he wants to, he feels he owes it to the boy to, um, to save him from that. And he also thinks he's the right material. He's, you know, he's been through the Marines. He's competed in, you know, uh, youth... Um, gymnastics. gymnastics competitions, that's right. Well, it is, it's utterly his own, isn't it? Um, you know, I think he's... Uh, there's this paradox in Matthew, to, the way I see it, is a, a mixture of uh, childlike love for cinema. I mean, something almost completely pure. Just the fan. The, the kid who just wants to be enchanted and spellbound and have his mind blown by what extraordinary things on the screen. It's as pure as that. And on the other side is something very, very sophisticated. A real, um, you know, a very, very mature cinematic and worldly informed <coughs> sensibility. So he knows how to conjure with all that. And that's, I don't think, it's, it, it's not always you can get that at a high functioning level in the same person. 
I, th- I, I think the X-Men franchise is brilliant. Mm. I do. I loved those comics uh, when I was a little boy and I had all the sort of duvet covers and posters <coughs> and things. And I think it's just... I just think it's really elegant the way that they've, you know, started with the old cast, brought in this, these, you know, the, the new generation with uh, Fassbender and James McAvoy and Nick Holt and Jennifer Lawrence, you know, doing the earlier part of the story. And I just think it all works great with the timelines and I just think it's very clever and funny and entertaining. Yeah, I'd go with you on that as well because that's kind of what I, I grew up with and I, I remember seeing it on TV as well and like being curious where it all came from and, and they're, yeah, they're incredible films, yeah. Definitely not. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs>uh yeah well i think you know i sort of slightly touched on it earlier didn't i i think um it's a kind of you know harry <clears throat> feels whether you know rightly or wrongly that he let down my dad during the opening sequence when uh he sacrifices himself to save merlin and uh and jack davenport's character lancelot and, and harry um and you know cut to 17 years later and things haven't gone well from exe uh you know, he's he's got a real nasty piece of work living uh, with him and his mum. His mum having been a very, very, very sort of together, um, you know, uh, well presented but not not dysfunctional lady, has turned into a real, really quite dysfunctional person. Um, you know, uh, seems to be sort of just really down on her luck. So there's a big gap in Exy's life for someone to come along and and say. <coughs> you know, buck your ideas up one and offer an avenue for for him to sort of do something good with his life. Um, so I think in a kind of weird way, and you know, they they kind of, it, you know, they kind of it's a sort of father sonny sort of thing. I think. <laughs>